Hello, so glad to see you again. I've missed everybody at Ocean View. And I want to read a chapter book to those of you who like to hear longer stories. Today, I'm going to be reading this book. It's called The Best Bad Thing. Isn't that a funny title? Do you think that something bad can turn out to be actually something really good? Right now, we seem to be in kind of a bad time, but maybe there's some things that you're really enjoying about being um, locked in at your house as well. The author of this book is Yoshiko Yoshida, and she's one of my favorite chapter book authors for children. One of the things I like about her is that she's from this area. She grew up in Berkeley, right next to Albany. And she often mentions um, very specific places in her books that are places that we know about. Um, she'll talk about Oakland or the Carquina Strait or different places that are right around here. That makes it interesting to read her books. Also, she just has a really great viewpoint about things and a nice way of writing things. Let's see if you agree with me. I'm going to read two chapters today, and next week I'll read some more. But let's get started. Here I am in my lazy girl chair. Isn't that great? Chapter one. Mama, do I absolutely have to go? I asked for the third time. The last thing I wanted to do was go out to East Oakland to visit Mrs. Hada after church. Everybody said she was a little crazy, and I believed them, even though she and Mama come from the same town in Japan and are good friends. My best friend, Tammy, says Mrs. Hada has bats in the belfry. I tried once more. Do I, Mama? But Mama didn't pay any attention to me. She was busy making rice balls for the picnic lunch she was taking to Mrs. Hada's. She'd spoon up a paddle full of steaming rice, wet and dip her fingers in salt, and then shape the rice into an egg-shaped oval. The hot rice was turning her palms red. But I guess Mama's hands are so used to being stuck in hot water in our home laundry they don't feel much of anything anymore. Mama just kept right on making rice balls and lining them up in neat rows in a black lacquer box. She put a red pickled plum in the middle of some so they'd resemble the Japanese flag with its red ball of sun on a field of white. Papa loves those pickled plums, but I sure don't. They are so sour. They cover me with goosebumps and they make my tongue curl. Here, Rinko, Mama said, pushing the lacquer box toward me. Put the sesame seeds on these for me. I started sprinkling the white rice balls with the tiny black seeds, so they looked as though the ants had already got to them. But all the time, I was trying to figure out how to get out of going to Mrs. Hada's. Mama didn't seem to realize I had some plans of my own. Suddenly, she answered me as though she'd just heard what I'd asked five minutes ago. Of course we have to go, she said. It's the 49th day anniversary of Mr. Hada's death. The way Mama said it, I knew it was an important Japanese custom, and there wasn't much point in arguing. But I did anyway. Well, Tammy and I were going to see Tarzan of the Apes at the Lauren this afternoon, I explained, as though it was vitally necessary for us to go. I didn't tell her that I was planning to use the 10 cents she had given me that week for helping her with the laundry. Actually, I'm supposed to put any money I earn in my going-to-college jar. But I thought Mama wouldn't mind if I give myself a treat once in a while. 
Going to see a movie on a Sunday, however, isn't exactly Mama's idea of a treat. To her, it's more like committing a major sin. For a long time, Mama had all of us believing that Sundays were meant only for going to church and being solemn. And it was only after my big brother Cal went to college that he developed some ideas of his own about Sundays. One day, he and Mama had a huge fight about it, and Papa sided with Cal. Times are changing, Mama, Papa told her. This is 1935, and there are worse sins than going to a movie on a Sunday. So Mama finally gave in. That was over a year ago, and ever since, Cal's done pretty much what he wants on Sundays, or any other day for that matter. That means that Joji, who's my younger brother, he's ten and a half and a real pest, well, Joji and I can do more on Sundays too. Except when there's something really important to Mama, like this anniversary of Mr. Hada's death. Cal was lucky. He was up in Alaska working in a salmon cannery for the summer and probably sinning like crazy every Sunday. It wasn't only that I wanted to go to the movies. I really didn't want to make an anniversary of a death call. After all, it wasn't as though you were celebrating something pleasant like a birthday or a wedding anniversary. I wasn't sure how I was supposed to act. Sorry and sad as if you were at a funeral? Or happy that Mr. Hada had been in heaven for 49 days? Or maybe it was like the Oban festival, when the spirits of the deceased are supposed to come home for a visit and everybody makes a lot of food to celebrate. Mama can be pretty stubborn when she wants to, but so can I. I wasn't going to give up without a really good try. Tarzan, Tarzan of the Apes will be gone by next Sunday, I said glumly. Mama didn't answer. And if Joji hadn't walked in then and opened his big mouth, my Mama might have come around. But old Joji spoiled everything. Oh, it sure is going to be fun seeing Zenny and Abu, he said. And before Mama could stop him, he picked up one of her rice balls and he popped the whole thing in his mouth. Joji loves to eat and stuffs himself at every opportunity. I could have wrung his neck for looking so happy about going to the Hadas. I could tell that Mama was about to say, well, look at Joji. He doesn't mind going to visit Mrs. Hada. He's not complaining. Actually, Joji had no reason to complain because he would have a good time with Mrs. Hada's two boys, Zenny and Abu. They'd go walk on the railroad tracks, or maybe even hitch a ride if there were any freight cars coming down the feeder line. Zenny was about the same age as my brother, but Abu was two years younger, and Joji loved having somebody he could boss around for a change. I gave my brother a dirty look. Mama and I were having a serious discussion here, I informed him. But Mama said there was nothing more to be discussed. At that point, Joji suddenly hollered, Yay! And he ran from the kitchen, choking and coughing. <coughs> I knew he'd just bitten into one of those sour pickled plums, and I couldn't help laughing. Ha! Serves you right, Joji! I yelled. I was mad at him because I knew I'd lost the argument with Mama. I knew when to give up. I brushed the sesame seeds from my hands and I marched into the hallway. I closed all four doors leading to it so I'd have some privacy. And I called my friend Tammy, even though I'd be seeing her in another hour at Sunday school. Listen, I can't go to the movies with you today, I said explaining what I had to do instead. 
Ah, shucks, Tammy sounded disappointed. Well, I guess I'll have to find somebody else to go with that. What? You mean you'd go anyway? Without me? Well, it is the last Sunday. Somehow, I'd expected my best friend to be willing to suffer with me. I mean, what's a best friend for if you can't count on her to suffer along with you when you've got to suffer? I was thinking about the time she was home with chicken pox, and I stayed home from the church picnic to keep her company since I'd already had the chicken pox. And that's what I call being a true friend. I at least expected Tammy to say she'd go with me to Mrs. Hodda's to keep me company, but she didn't. She can be mean and selfish sometimes. And even if she is my best friend, there are times when I definitely do not like her. Also, it doesn't help that she can do almost everything better than I can. By the time I hung up the phone, I was in a terrible mood. I didn't sit next to Tammy in Sunday school class, and I didn't answer when our teacher, Mrs. Ito, asked what happened to Isaac when Abraham took him to the mountain to be sacrificed. I knew the answer, but I just sat there simmering like a volcano about to explode. Sometimes, when Mrs. Ito runs out of things to do before the end of class, she'll ask me to sing the books of the New Testament. This is somebody nobody else in class, or maybe even in the whole church, can do. I learned it from an old minister from Japan who came over once for Sunday dinner. He began with Matthew and kept right on singing until he got to Revelation. It was the funniest thing I ever heard, and when I got over laughing, I asked him to teach it to me, even though it took all afternoon. I usually oblige when I'm asked to perform this feat, and I give my class a good laugh. But this was one time I didn't feel like entertaining anybody, especially Tammy, who was sitting two seats away from me, and who would be sitting in the Lauren Theater that afternoon without me. As soon as church was over, we piled into Papa's Model T and headed for East Oakland. Joji always sits up front with Papa so he can watch him drive. And I know very well that one of these days he's going to try driving when Papa isn't around. He's always hanging around Papa's repair shop in our garage, watching Papa fix up somebody's car. As a matter of fact, I'm waiting for a chance to drive Papa's car myself. After all, Cal learned when he was 12... And I'm almost that right now. The closer we got to East Oakland, the faster Papa drove. Mama was so nervous, she kept grabbing my arm and calling out, We have plenty of time, Papa. What are you rushing for? But I was glad Papa was going fast. I was starving and could hardly wait to eat Mama's rice balls and chicken. Papa went even faster after we were past 68th Avenue. There weren't many houses out there, and the ones we passed looked like lonely sentinels standing in wide, weed-filled fields. The weeds were dry and strawberry-colored and sort of shimmered in the sun. They looked like fields of golden grain. Not that I've actually ever seen any not having been outside the state of California. I just thought that that's how amber waves of grain must look. I was getting over my black sulk now and began to sing, Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of weeds. I was waiting for Joji to whirl around and say, That's grain, not weeds. But he didn't, because Papa was bouncing the car over the railroad tracks and calling out, Well, here we are! The Hada family lived in a tall, dilapidated, two-story wooden house with most of its paint peeled off. It looked lonely and old and tired, 
as though it had been battered for a lot of years by the wind and the rain. There was an old barn in back where I guess somebody once kept horses. And it reminded me a little of Papa's repair shop in our old garage. It's stuffed with all his tools and equipment and there's junk spilling out into the driveway. Well, the barn had the same shabby look as Mrs. Hotta's house. And I thought a good strong wind could blow them both over. Beyond the barn were the open fields where Mr. Hotta grew cucumbers every summer to sell at the nearby factory. The rest of the year, he used to do odd jobs or garden work for the rich white folks in Oakland. When we drove up, I could see Mrs. Hotta and the two boys working out in the cucumber fields, even though it was Sunday. Joji charged out of the car yelling, Hey, Zenny, Abu, we're here! Joji has absolutely no class. He probably didn't even give a thought as to why we were there. But I was worrying about what to do with my face. Hmm. Should I smile at Mrs. Hada? Or look sad? Or what? I sort of hung back, waiting for Mama and Papa while they got out the lunch basket and some flowers from Mama's garden. I certainly didn't want to be the first one to have to speak to Mrs. Hada. Mama shaded her eyes as she looked at, out for Mrs. Hada out in the field. Oh, poor soul, she said. She has to work so hard now that Mr. Hada is gone. Papa nodded. I guess she could use some help, especially with all the cucumbers maturing at once. I saw Mama nod, and I could just tell that her brain was clicking away, trying to think of some way she could help Mrs. Hada. Mama can't stand seeing someone in need of help without doing something about it. Our neighbor, Mrs. Sugarman, says Mama is a combination of pure mercy and moxie. I just bet Mama wants to come help Mrs. Hada, I thought to myself. I just bet she might come out and stay a while to get Mrs. Hada safely through the growing season. That would leave me in charge at home to take care of Papa and Joji and to run Mama's home laundry. And I began wondering if I could do all that by myself. Of course, I knew how to run the old washing machine Papa fixed up for Mama. And in between fixing cars, Papa could help me with the rinsing. That's the hard part, rinsing those big sheets by hand. I'd get Joji to help hang the wash, and he could feed the chickens and collect the eggs for me. He was old enough now, so he knew about hens and their eggs. When he was little and saw there were no eggs, he'd say, I guess the hen's empty now, as though it kept a lot of eggs inside and let one out each day until they were all gone. I was so busy thinking about how I'd take over at home that I completely forgot about what to do with my face. And suddenly, there I was, right in front of Mrs. Hatta. She was wearing a pair of baggy pants and one of Mr. Hatta's old shirts. And she had a wide straw hat tied on her head to keep the sun off her face. She also had a hot water bottle tied on her back with a long piece of cloth. I guess her back was aching from all that work she had to do in the fields. Oh, hello, Rinko, she said. How nice to see you. I put out my hand, all solemn and serious. But instead of shaking it in the way I expected her to, Mrs. Hada stuck a cucumber in it. Here, she said, you can have that one. I was so surprised I burst out laughing. And Mrs. Hada laughed with me. I was surprised she'd be so cheerful when she had so much to be miserable about. After all, her husband had just died and she had to be out picking cucumbers on a Sunday afternoon with an aching back. But that was only the first surprise. 
The second big surprise of the day came after we got home. Well, that's the end of chapter one. I know I said I would read you two chapters today, but it took me a little longer to read that than I thought it would. So I'm going to save the second chapter for next time. And you can guess what you think the surprise will be when she gets back home. We'll see next time. Until then, take care and stay safe. Bye.